We wanted to, it to feel real and lived in. We wanted there to be rust on things. We wanted things to not work exactly right. All the bots are puppeted by human beings, you know, and we do, I mean, and, you know, we, were, we were happy that that, you know, it, it gave the show the right kind of texture. Hello, Hi, Tatiana, how are you? Nice to meet you. Great to meet you. It's nice to meet you both. Uh, I am very much enjoying Hello Tomorrow so far. Uh, uh, Amit, my first question is for you. Just how did you guys prepare to um, create this like really big, uh, you know, specific world, retro futuristic setting, like huge names? What was that like going into it? I mean, it was crazy. I mean, let's just say, you know, this started many years ago and it started with, you know, sales videos from the night training sales videos from the 1950s or the Maisel's Brothers documentary salesman or Tex Avery cartoons. And obviously we're drawing on this weird collective imagination that we all have, but it's not really, it's not in reality yet, but it's at all, it's barely, you know, um, and, and, you know, it was, it was, uh, you know, we kind of climbed up a big hill here for us. You know, this is our first show. So by the time Billy was, you know, signing up to play the part, we were blown away. And then suddenly it's Hank Azaria and, and Allison Pill and Hanifa Wood and Duchesne. And we're watching these characters walk on set. I mean, there is no way to prepare or, you know, other than to do it. I was lucky enough to uh, have a child about a week before the writer's room started. So like, oh it was my first. Perfect preparation. It was my, my first child. So, you know, song. it was, it was, it was tough. <laughs> you know, but it was it was a great joy. And I think in, in something like this at this scale and and particularly in something that's so purely that we wanted to be so purely of our imagination, you got to just like roll with it. You go with the flow, you invent the, op, you know, we weren't building out the world. We were just inventing what object we needed. And suddenly there's a jet ball in the background of a scene. And then in the next episode there's a jet ball stadium and suddenly there's there's a jet you know and you can you can build out of these really smaller ideas um instead of instead of trying to conceive of it as a whole which i you know is it would be impossible i was gonna ask about the process of crafting these different you know gadgets and like yep. approaching that aesthetic so i guess lucas for you i will ask uh was there a gadget or robot or element of this aesthetic that uh, you were most excited by or that came about in the strangest way? It was such a fun show to make because it calls on everybody involved to get, to get their imaginations deep into it and then to build the world from scratch. And we, we were so thrilled with the work of our, of our designers, our production designers, costume designers, the, uh, uh, the, the whole crew and the props department was particularly brilliant. And we got to a point in the run where we they had a pretty good idea of what the show was about. And we knew, too, we would just put weird stuff in the scripts, make up names for stuff. We didn't even know what it was just to see what they would come up with. So you like wait until you get to episode five. And we're like, we want this to be a cast master in this scene. They're like, what's a cast master? We're like, I I don't really know. I think it's a, a machine where you press a button and tuna casserole comes out. And they're like, OK. Let's go. And then we show up on set one day and there's there's a mayo injector and a cheese injector and Allison Pill presses it and the door opens and steam comes out and there's a tuna casserole right there and that is the magic of cinema. Uh, and and couldn't it, it's as fun as it gets when when you're when you're all working together and surprising each other like that. It's why it's why you do it. That was all really important to us, you know, we built we wanted everything to be made Practically, we wanted to, it to feel real and lived in. We wanted there to be rust on things. We wanted things to not work exactly right. All the bots are puppeted by human beings, you know, and we do, I mean, and, you know, we, were, we were happy that that, you know, it, it gave the show the right kind of texture. And to us, that's the reason you can play a heartbreaking scene in front of a robot shaking a martini, because at the end of the day, the show is set in a sort of ridiculously fantastical world, but the stories take place at the level of the human heart, which 
Uh, I would say the same thing about the world we're in right now. It's, it gets a little ridiculous out here, but uh, for better or for worse, we all live at the scale of the human heart. And when you have a cast like ours, you are going to get scenes that make you feel things you never thought you'd feel with the robot shaking martini in the room. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You guys have crafted such a fascinating and uh, believable world, which in and of itself is amazing. So thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to see the rest of the season. Oh, can't wait to see you so much. Thank you.